Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design That. I got the first thing ticked off for 2025 and that was to get this CNC back up and running. I've just finished cutting the first part on the CNC and I've got it all working properly. So today I wanna to go over just some of the upgrades that I've made to this CNC since then and also some tips to get up and running with UC CNC. So if you're new to this series, last year I rebuilt my CNC controller. This was an Omeo 3040 CNC and the original controller that come with it was quite temperamental I'd have lots of issues with things cutting out when I was running my compressor in the same room on the same circuit and also it was using a cracked version of Mac 3 which had a lot of bugs in it so I wanted to move away from that setup I wanted to rebuild the controller and do it properly or as good as I could and then I also wanted to move over to use UC CNC. Now the first upgrade that I made was, I've just moved this back so you could see it, this uh, tool setter. This will allow me to set the same Z0 height when I do my tool changes in between operations. This is my first step of getting it close to an automatic machine. I think eventually I'd really like to get a ATC spindle on here and get some sort of kind of like automatic tool changer set up. That would be really cool. That's kind of like the end goal of this machine. But for now, I've got kind of like a semi-automatic setup where I can change the end mill. I can then run an M6 command, which will then touch off of this tool setter, and I will get the new Z0 height according to what I initially set it to when I was measuring it on the workpiece. This is all very complicated for me to understand. And I wanna say thank you to Matt who sent me some macros to try and get this set up. I'm pretty useless with this type of software and even understanding how CAM really does work. So I didn't have much luck with that. But thankfully I did discover, and this is my next upgrade that I made, there is a essentially a add-on to UC CNC that will kind of take care of all of these macros and getting these things set up. And that is the CNC Woodworkers screen sets. So screen sets for UC CNC are essentially kind of ways to redesign the interface and to also add in some sort some functionality as to it as well. With CNC Woodworkers screen set, here's set it up to include these auto zero and auto tool change macros with it. It makes the process much, much easier. I won't go into too much detail of how to get it set up because he does provide documentation and he has got a few videos on the topic of setting it up. But basically what you need is you need two tool setters. You need a, a plate that you will put onto the part and this will touch off and it will measure the Z height on the part. And then you need a permanent tool setter and then that will, once it has measured the Z0 on the part, it will move over to the permanent position, it will touch off, and then you have your offset. And then from then, when you do your, your tool changes, you put in a new end mill and it's at a different height, it will touch off of here, and then the content of macro and the, the calculations, it will be able to calculate where it needs to be to get the Z0 correct. So let me get a part set up in the machine and I will show you the, the tool change working properly. And I just wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, PCB Way. If you are looking for any type of machining service like CNC machining, 3D printing, laser engraving, sheet metal folding, injection molding, PCB Way has you covered. They offer all of these services and a whole suite of PCB services such as PCB etching, assembly, OEM and full turnkey services to bring your idea to a finished product. They offer worldwide shipping and low quantity orders across a huge range of these services. So be sure to go over to pcbway.com today and check out what they've got on offer. So the first thing we need to do is obviously hit the reset button and then we will just home all. And that will just go through the normal homing cycle. So this is the 2022 screen set from CNC Woodworkers. The thing that it has here is it's got a nice simplified probing setup with obviously images. But the main thing that I have wanted really is these two buttons here. We've got calibrate tool setter. We've also got Z, uh, Z auto zero. So the first thing you would do is you'll move over to whereabouts you want your uh, work zero to be. So let's just say that we are gonna be coming over this like here and then we'll just calm down a little bit so what we need to do is we need to get our touch plate and we can hook this up and let's just put the magnet on here 
So let's just say this is where we want our Z0 to be. So let's just zero X and Y, let's pretend that's the, uh, the position that we need. Uh, and then we will go to Calibrate Tool Setter. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to touch down on this plate to get the Z0 for the part. And then it will move over to the Tool Setter and it will touch off of there to get the offset. So let's press Calibrate Tool Setter. So now if we go to zero, it should go back to the zero point. Okay, so that has gone to the zero. Now let's pretend that we want to change the tool. So we can come to the change tool. Uh, we'll just say that we are doing, we click on change tool. So we'll go back to the home position. And then it will ask us to change the tool. So let's just So let's pretend that we've got a really stubby, short end mill now. So it's asking us to replace the tool in the spindle. When finished, click on OK. So now it is going to go and touch off of here and work out the offset. So you click on OK. So it will touch off. And now if we go to zero, you should see that it will go back down to the same point as before. So that is a really nice feature. So as I said, once I had that set up, I could start to machine my first part. Now, the first one that I machined uh, actually turned out smaller than I was expecting. This is meant to be a 40 millimeter disc and it come out smaller. And the reason is that I didn't actually calibrate the axes in UC CNC. So this is actually quite an easy thing to do because I was kind of dreading having to set all these motors up again and get them all you know, calibrated within a new bit of software. But I'm going to show you how you do it in UC CNC because it is very, very easy. So to calibrate your axes, this is all you need to do. You go to the axis setup and then you go to calibrate axis. So you can see that I've already set these up because we have the, the values here, but I'm just going to show you what I did. So you click on calibrate axis. So when this pops up, um, you these two boxes will be uh, blank. What you need to do is you need to enter the distance you want to move and the feed rate. So I've got a dial indicator set up on my axes and all I did is it's a plunge one. So I've got quite a bit of travel. I think I've probably got about, I think about 10 millimeters travel. But what I did is I just set the movement to say like two millimeters or one millimeter. Feed rate doesn't really matter. You can keep it six units, that's fine. And then you click on okay. And then basically it will move that distance and then you will measure with your indicator how much it actually moved. So you'd click on OK, it would move that amount and then it would ask you what is your actual value. So all you do is you put in your measured distance and then it will calculate how much it needs to compensate it by. So then you click on save and that is it. Your axes are now calibrated. So little things like that that I really do like with UC CNC. Um, and with this screen set that I got, this is uh, available to purchase on the CNC Woodworkers site. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, I bought it out on my own money. This is not sponsored in any way or anything like that. But yeah, I, I've really enjoyed using it and the macro setup really does make things easier. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into just a few things that you can do with UC CNC. There's plenty of other videos uh, on YouTube to have a look at if you're thinking about getting this set up. The next upgrade that I made to the CNC was adding a peristaltic pump to the Mr. setup that I've got. Now my original DIY fog buster, it does work okay. But I still did find that it does require a little bit of tweaking to get a consistent flow of mist. So what I wanted to do is instead of just relying on the air pressure feeding into the, the water filter bottle and using these needle valves on the fog buster, is I wanted to try and use a peristaltic pump, which would give me what I feel is probably a little bit more finer control over the delivery of the coolant into the nozzle. Now on AliExpress, you can pick these up very, very cheap. I think this one that I bought here was about 12 pounds. 
They do have different versions, and I think that the one that I've got is probably not good enough. The motor that is in it is very temperamental once you get the dial close to being as slow as possible. It will kick in and it will kick out of operation. The one that I've got is from, I think it has a delivery of 19 to I think like 100 milliliters per minute. That is, that is kind of like the flow rate that the motor is able to supply. I feel that even at the slowest setting, for this setup, is it's delivering too much coolant. So I think there is another option, which I think is like five to 20 milliliters per minute delivery. And I think I will buy that one. That will be even slower. So basically, just, just look for one that has a really, really slow delivery rate of the, the liquid. I think it could also be due to the fact that these cheap ones, the controller and the motors, are not very good. I know that there are more expensive ones that are you know, kind of like 50 up to like 100, 200 pounds. I would probably guess that they have better controllers and motors and you get much finer control. And I feel that for this type of setup, in order to get those droplets and not it being a mist, you need to just have that perfect flow rate. It's, it still does work. It just has how the original setup worked. I do get a little bit more consistent. I don't really have to rely on the air pressure. Um, I can just turn up the pump and it will deliver a little bit more coolant when I need it, but it's still not perfect to how I want it. But I do think the this peristaltic pump is probably a better way of doing it. With the AXBB and UCCNC, I've got much more capabilities of adding further inputs and outputs to the system. I'll probably add a solenoid valve and a relay to my controller in order to add some sort of kind of like on-off button for the air. I don't really need it at the moment because honestly, when I'm doing these operations, I'm usually just standing here and I'm watching it so I can just turn off the air supply. So it's not too much of an issue. You know, in an effort to try and get this closer to being kind of like an automated process, I do think having some sort of control for the air will be valuable. I'm happy that I can now start thinking about designing parts for uh, the CNC again. And I've got a few projects coming up where I'm going to be using it. And if you're wondering what the disc was for, I've recently got a new Monport 100 watt fiber laser. Uh, and this was just a little prototype for a part that I'm thinking of making. And these are rosettes. I'd never known the name of them before, but I've always been seen them being used on lights and camera equipment. And basically it's kind of like a little gripper. I did make it for my previous DIY camera tripod and I never knew what they actually were called. Um, but yeah, I've been using the, uh, the fiber laser from Monport to try to have a go at laser engraving some rosettes. Uh, and yeah, the, the results have been amazing. This thing can blast through metal. And I've got a full review coming up soon. I've got a few projects where I'm gonna be using it. So stay tuned for that. It's gonna be very, very interesting. But anyway, hopefully you've learned something. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, but that is it for today. I will catch you later.